I've only been using full self-driving 12.5 for a few days, but unlike the last version, I don't need any more seat time to tell you that this is a giant leap forward in comfort, confidence, and consistency. It really truly is the best version I've ever tried in many regards. And you don't have to take my word for it. The feedback coming in from all over the US and Canada has been overwhelmingly positive. It's not quite at robo taxi level yet, and I still do have some interventions which we'll talk about in a bit, but the improvement in capability from just one version to another, I would say is nearly as big as the shift from version 11 to version 12, which is really saying something. Waking up to my car suddenly having these new abilities and a brand new driving style reminds me of the scene in The Matrix, but instead of Neo downloading Kung Fu, FSD seems to have downloaded experience from a limo driver. I know Kung Fu. Show me. The way that this version smoothly speeds up and slows down and just the delicacy and control it has with the steering inputs is something difficult to get across on video, but trust me when I say that every turn and maneuver it makes has never felt better, even in complex areas and situations. I can honestly say that in terms of comfort in this very first version of 12.5, it's already better than any Uber driver I've ever had. The head of the autopilot team said that there was a huge focus on improving both safety and smoothness in this release, one of his tests being to not spill an open cup of coffee while on full self-driving, and 12.5 was the first version to be able to do it. And not only does it do things smoothly, it does them confidently. This is a very tough scenario ahead. We're supposed to make a left turn at the next street, but there's an accident that's blocking the intersection. The first thing you'll notice is that it did not move into the left-hand turn lane because it knew oncoming cars were using that lane to go around the accident. It decides to make its move after this next car passes, even showing intention by continually creeping into the intersection. Then does one final check to make sure the person in front of us is stopping. He waves us through and it continues. This moment literally gave me chills. It was input for input exactly what I would have done, except probably honestly better. Before we take a deeper dive into some more truly amazing clips I can't wait to show you, we gotta talk about what makes this particular version the giant step forward that it is. The Tesla AI team has apparently optimized the inference stack from the ground up, which enabled them to increase the parameter count of the driving model by 5x and still run it in real time. And what does a 5x increase in parameter count mean exactly? I have no idea. But James Dalma, who's an expert in the field, says it like this. Models with more parameters have more capacity, meaning it can make better use of training data and generally have higher accuracy and better performance. The way that I understand this is that the increase in parameters give it access to more information from the data it's trained on, which enables it to make better predictions, which should hypothetically make it a more competent driver. And proof of this is in the pudding, because I think that's exactly what we're seeing. And this is all well and good, but there is a pretty large caveat. A larger model needs more compute power to run, and for the first time ever, we're seeing a split in rollout from Hardware 3 and Hardware 4. And if you own a car with Hardware 3, now is the time to panic. I'm just kidding. Kinda. This version will be coming to Hardware 3 after some optimizations, but we don't know what those optimizations will be and if there'll be any noticeable differences between how it runs on different hardware. I still do have my Hardware 3 Model S and will be sure to put it through its paces once it gets 12.5. And with all of this, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that, in my opinion, we're seeing clear evidence that a higher parameter account equals better self-driving, meaning there's a clear path forward to driverless and it's really only only a matter of time in my opinion. They also aren't even close to Hardware 4's limitations yet. In fact, Elon said they can enable up to a further 8x increase in parameters, which is just wild to think about. Keep in mind that as far as we know, 12.5 is still entrained entirely with Hardware 3 data. It's just the parameter count that has gone up, which means that I think the new worst case scenario for Hardware 3 might be needing to upgrade the full self-driving computer to allow for more compute. 
Not saying that will be necessary for driverless, and I don't want to speculate too much, but did want to mention that, as this does mark the first release ever, that Hardware 4 seems to have an edge over Hardware 3. And speaking of having an edge, there's a simple way to give yourself an edge over the entire internet by using this video's sponsor, Private Internet Access. You know how Netflix took away The Office from us? Pretty shady. But in just a couple of clicks, you can have it back. PIA lets you spoof your geolocation through 91 different countries and also all 50 individual US states, which doesn't just help protect you against the prying eyes of data collectors, but can also unlock geo-restricted content on all major streaming services and get you a better deal on things like flights and games. They have strict no-logging data policies, which have not only been proven true by an independent security audit, but has also been proven again and again in court when government demands them to provide users data and they simply can't because they don't have any. And if you don't believe it, they are completely open source, meaning you can review how it works for yourself. By using my special link in the description, you can get 83% off and four months free, which comes out to about $2 a month. A single membership also covers an unlimited amount of devices and an unlimited amount of connections simultaneously, making it super easy to share with every member of your household and protect all their devices. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, there's really no reason not to try it, and it's genuinely a product I use all the time and highly recommend. Private Internet Access was this channel's very first sponsorship, and I truly appreciate them for being a long-term sponsor of this channel. All right, hope you guys are ready for this because we got a lot of amazing clips to go through. And sorry the visualizations in these nighttime clips don't look super clear. The recording glitched out, but some of these are just too good not to share. Now, it might be a little hard to make out, but there's a little white dot running around in front of us, and that's actually a cat in the road. Comes to a nice smooth stop here, obviously recognizes it, and I gotta pause it and say that I think it's pretty incredible that it's not just trying to go around it here because it has plenty of room. It's obviously knowing that this is some kind of animal and that it shouldn't pass. Then a car approaches from around the corner, which seems to give a little bit of sense of urgency to full self-driving, and you can see it start nudging its way forward towards the cat. This makes the cat scurry away and it immediately proceeds doing an excellent job getting out of the way of the truck, even heading towards those trash cans to give him more room. Trying to get across the smoothness that this version has is gonna be pretty tough over video, but I'm gonna do my best. Take, for example, this unprotected left here with traffic approaching from the left. You see it comes to a full stop and then starts creeping forward. And the amazing thing is that it never stops creeping. It never actually gets back down to zero miles an hour, even when there's steady traffic flowing from the left. Proceeding nice and early, even though that guy didn't even use a turn signal, getting us all the way into the right-hand lane and immediately making our right-hand turn. Smooth as butter. And I hope you don't mind me reiterating how smooth this version is, or else this might be a tough video for you to watch. This intersection is every bit as jacked up as it looks on the visualizations, but 12.5, again, handling it smooth as butter when older versions struggled here quite a bit. You can see it also did move over one lane without using a turn signal, and that is because the left lane becomes a left turn only lane. Another thing that it does a lot better than any previous version of version 12 is how it handles yellow lights. Now, in my opinion, this is a huge improvement, but when I posted this clip on X, there was a surprise amount of people who thought that it should have braked hard instead. So let's just agree to disagree on that one. I gotta admit that I was a little bit nervous after 12.4 came out because sure it obeyed the laws a little bit better, but it did so at the expense of driving smoothness. And smoothness equals confidence. When the car is driving smoothly, it feels like it knows what it's doing and it's confident in its decisions. And that's something that 12.5 nails. Again, super hard to get in video. It's a lot easier if you're in the car, but just take a look at the path it takes through this intersection. Absolutely the smoothest path possible, even ignoring the lane lines a little bit, but that is what makes you not spill your coffee. Another thing that I've been noticing it doing much more consistently is moving over lanes so it doesn't have to slow down. You'll see the driver in front of us move over lanes because there's a cars with hazards on and it just immediately follows him. And it's not only for stopped vehicles like that, but also when it has any hint that the vehicle in front of us is about to slow down. We have a right turn in our navigation route, but watch how quickly after the driver in front of us turns on his turn signal does it move over into the left-hand lane. And I know 
though that might seem like a pretty small thing, but the small things really do add up. One way I test versions is by putting them into tricky situations and seeing how they react. Like here, I'm manually driving and purposely going off of the navigation route and then engaging FSD just to see what it would do. You see the navigation route wants it to do an immediate U-turn, but it was too many lanes over. And still, even with that challenge, re somehow remains very, very smooth. And I'm sure you probably want to see the actual U-turn, so here you go. Version 12.3 wasn't the greatest at U-turns. 12.4 was better, but 12.5 is definitely the best so far. The car does something up here that I don't mind, but I know a lot of people dislike, but we're turning right on red here, obviously, and there are cars approaching from the left, but as soon as the car from our lane clears and turns right, it immediately proceeds, even when there's a car in the neighboring lane. Personally, I don't mind stuff like this as long as it's safe, but just another example of the confidence in this version, my goodness. Another thing that we gotta talk about is that this version really wants to reverse. And I know I've said in other videos where it kind of feels like some other versions kind of want to sometimes, but no, 12.5 actually wants to reverse. And I know this for sure, because if we stop the video for a moment and take a look at the path planner, it is going backwards. That is the exact path the front of the car would make if it turned the steering wheel to the right to shimmy its way out of here. But it's not allowed to shift to reverse yet. But it almost seems like it thinks it's in reverse because in moments like these, it keeps nudging its way forward, as you can see. It almost seems like the car isn't doing what the planner expects, and it just kind of keeps going more and more towards this car curb until it can't move anymore and stays at a complete stop. And finally, daytime. I told you we'd make it. What you're about to see is full self-driving play a dangerous game. There are some police officers to our left that are about to cross the street to get over to their car, but they're still talking to the people on the side of the street. So it kind of makes a pretty awkward situation where we don't really know when to go. And I actually think that it chooses a really good moment to start proceeding, but then the third officer to the left starts walking out, looking like he's about to cross the street. Now, as you'll know, if you've used any other version of full self-driving, this is typically where it would just stop. But 12.5 asserts itself and gets across the street with no drama. He didn't even look twice at us. The smoothness and confidence that this version has around pedestrians might not seem that mind-blowing until you take a ride in a Waymo or something and you realize that pedestrians are a very tough problem for self-driving cars. A situation like this where it's driving towards the back of a pedestrian because it knows he's about to get out of our way is basically impossible with any other self-driving technology. But because this is trained off millions of real world clips, it has an idea of what cars are gonna do. Like it's barely even slowing down for that car who was backing out of their driveway now. It just knew that he was gonna move out of our way. Even when pretty rare situations happen, like a deer running out in front of the car when we're already going pretty slow, it slows down a little to let you know that it sees it, but pretty much never does anything harsh. Like I said, the smoothness is so hard to get across when you're not in the car, but I'm gonna do my best. The truck in front of us is about to brake pretty hard because there's a semi truck pulling off the road. Try to keep your eye on the distance between us and the truck. It literally doesn't change at all. It matched his braking exactly. This is something full self-driving struggled a lot with just one version ago. And watch how it handles scenarios where it knows it's gonna need to use additional caution, like with this truck in the road and a person standing next to it. Ever so gradually going slower and slower truly does feel like instead of reacting to things, it's planning for them well ahead. And while these are admittedly all pretty mundane scenarios, I hope I'm painting a picture for you of why this version is so awesome. It is finally starting to feel like the limo driver I've always wanted it to be and that I talk to you guys about all the time since starting the channel. Even in odd situations like this where there's a bus pulled off to the side of the road and we have to go 
around it. And as soon as it wants to get back into its own lane, it's forced to reconsider because the bus starts moving. It still just remains so smooth. It's, it's honestly ridiculous. This is by far and away my favorite update to full self-driving ever. And the craziest thing is, this is just the very first version of 12.5. The Tesla AI team should be extremely proud. The smoothness, the confidence, the decision making is all just seriously next level. And another thing I can't wait for is end to end for highway because you see how it's hugging the left right now to stay away from the barrier. Yeah, currently highway autopilot does not do that. And I would love for it to drive more like this on the highway. But of course, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is not robo taxi ready quite yet. And there still are a few issues. The biggest of which I think is that I mentioned in 12.4 that it's doing a really good job of staying away from curbs, but unfortunately this version likes to get really close to curbs around sweeping corners. It is shockingly close to this curb off to our left, and you can see up here I do have to disengage. It might have made it on its own, but there was a lot of tire marks on that curb, and I did not want to risk doing the same thing. I'll show you another example of that in the next video. And another problem that's left over is that it sometimes seems to randomly have a mind of its own. You can see it getting over into the left-hand turn lane here for no reason. Our navigation route is straight ahead. The good news here is that it takes the L and just completes the left-hand turn without doing anything crazy and just goes ahead and reroutes. But still not really sure why that stuff keeps happening randomly. And the last area I notice is still struggling in is with blinking red lights, which of course you're supposed to treat as basically a stop sign. It still seems to get pretty stuck in these scenarios and won't continue on its own without an accelerator press. But the interesting thing here is that after this truck to our right proceeds, you can see the path planner looks like it wants to proceed, but something isn't letting the car go on its own. My suspicion after seeing this was that there's some kind of other system that's not letting the car proceed through what it thinks is a red light. But then just the very next day, this happens. You can see the construction flagger off to the left holds up a slow sign in our direction, but holds up his hand to tell the truck in front of us to stop. He seemed a little bit confused at first, but then ends up coming to a complete stop so that they can get this vehicle through. And then as they're waving us through, the car actually doesn't even come to a stop for the red light. And it seems to follow the direction of the flagger, which was pretty crazy. Even with those oddities, this is by far the best version of full self-driving to ever come out, in my opinion. And the entire Tesla AI team owes themselves a vacation. This is some seriously next level stuff. And if this is the kind of performance we can expect from here on out for full self-driving, I think we're all in for a treat. And stay tuned because the next video I'll be releasing is a full drive through the narrow streets of Berkeley. And as you could probably guess, I think it's probably the best drive ever through there. Thank you all so much for watching. I can't wait to see what you guys think in the comments, or if you have experienced it with yourself, please let me know. Am I crazy for loving this version so much? I don't think so, but really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Until next time, everybody.